know, some nights that was score, some nights that was, uh, you know, play defense, some nights play rebounding, you know. Uh, whatever it took to win, that's just what I wanted to do, and um, I had fun doing it. So, um, just, you know, just unfortunate. You know, maybe we hit a few shots, uh, don't have injuries. You know, we're not having this conversation right now, but that's the name of the game, and uh, that's what life dictated for us. So. So there's multiple signs that are indicating that Kyle Kuzma and the Los Angeles Lakers may be headed towards a divorce. And this is something that I anticipated from last year. And I was even more shocked when the Lakers decided to sign the man to a contract extension. And that's not to say it wasn't deserved. There's actually a very reasonable explanation as to why Kyle Kuzma did get the contract extension to begin with. But all of this ties to Carmelo Anthony. So what's going on, guys? Your boy Mike here. Before we get to the content, just want to remind you guys that my podcast, Laced Up, is giving away a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X to a subscriber that turns on our notifications on that channel when we get to 40,000 subscribers over there. We're about 13,000 subscribers. And if you do me a favor and smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm, it really keeps me up at night thinking that there are some of you guys that don't like my videos. And now that we got all that out of the way, cue the intro. Mike check one, two, one, two. What's going on everybody? So there's one thing that was really sketchy that I guess gave life to this rumor. And it's the fact that Kyle Kuzma used to have power forward for the Los Angeles Lakers proudly in his Instagram bio. This was like the man's biggest flex. He loved bragging about the fact that he was the power forward of the Los Angeles Lakers. And to be honest, who could blame him? That's a pretty big freaking flex. I always used to call out Kyle Kuzma for kind of living an influencer lifestyle, but I have to hand it to him. The man really made the most out of his opportunity. He made sure that he worked his way into LeBron James and Jeannie Buss's good graces to make sure that he wasn't the man that was traded for Anthony Davis. Rather, he was the man that was going to be retained once Anthony Davis was traded to the Lakers. Now, I understand that's a fairly controversial take because you could also make the argument that Brandon Ingram and Lon so ball were considered to be more valuable assets in addition to Josh Hart than Kyle Kuzma, but I digress. Kuzma has had a phenomenal career given where he was drafted in the NBA draft. And in his first two years for the Los Angeles Lakers, he was considered to be an absolute steal. There were reports about general managers kicking themselves for completely sleeping on Kyle Kuzma. And in his rookie season, he averaged 16 points per game off of 45% shooting and 37% from three while attempting 5.6 threes per game. And in his second season, he averaged 18.7 points per game. 30% from three. And when the Lakers signed LeBron James, while well, Kyle Kuzma emerged as LeBron's number two man. Originally, you would think it'd be Brandon Ingram or Lonzo Ball, but no, Kyle Kuzma was the recipient of some beautiful passes from LeBron James, some wide open looks, and that resulted in a slight bump in points per game, almost averaging 19 points per game, although his three point efficiency took a bit of a dip. Now, all of this changed once the Lakers acquired Anthony Davis. When the Lakers successfully traded for Anthony Davis, obviously Kyle Kuzma had to take a little bit of a lesser role. And this is not to anyone's surprise. When you bring in AD, he's going to be the starting power forward. Kyle Kuzma is now relegated to a role player type of role. You throw Luke Walton out and now Kyle Kuzma is playing for a defensive minded head coach named Frank Vogel that is going to reduce his role and is also going to have to coexist with Anthony Davis in some sets where AD is playing the center position and Kuz is playing the power forward position. The result, well, over the past two seasons, Kyle Kuzma averaged 13 points per game and a slight reduced minutes roll in 2019 to 2020, the championship season, 25 minutes per game, and this past season, 29 minutes per game. But of course, Anthony Davis was also dealing with an injury on and off. So Kuz started 32 games this past year. But for the most part, we get an idea of the type of player he is. He averaged about 13 points per game. Now, the thing is, the Lakers signed Kyle Kuzma to a pretty nice contract extension 
position once they won a championship. And this comes to no surprise. LeBron James does this thing where he mixes friendship and business way too much in my opinion. And I saw this happening with Tristan Thompson. Whenever LeBron wins a championship, he likes rewarding those around him. So Kyle Kuzma and KCP saw huge paydays. KCP was retained with bird rights, obviously. Kyle Kuzma got a three-year, $40 million extension. Although to be honest, I feel like he should have been traded. And he reprised in his awkward role once again this past year. Now the situation's a little bit different. The Lakers didn't win the NBA championship this year. And of course, there are a myriad of reasons why an unfortunate anchor injury for LeBron James, Anthony Davis nearly tearing his Achilles and thank goodness he didn't, Dennis Schroeder being in and out of lineups and being integrated into a brand new team, a 57 day off season. But obviously winning cures all and when you lose in the first round of the NBA playoffs, well, some questions are going to be asked. Kyle Kuzma is no longer making a sacrifice to win championships. He is now just a player that's relegated to bench duty and he has two years to prove his worth once again. That's why there's been a a lot of people suggesting that Kyle Kuzma may get traded to the Sacramento Kings for one of their many disgruntled players, whether it's Marvin Bagley or Buddy Heald. I think most likely Buddy Heald because they just drafted Tyrese Halliburton and he's performing really well. It makes a lot of sense. Kuz gets to go back and play for the head coach that he succeeded with. Luke Walton gets a player that he's had success with. They both like each other. Maybe it boosts team chemistry. The Los Angeles Lakers could get some more shooting in return. LeBron James needs shooters and love shooters but the question is what do the lakers do then you have this huge void at the scoring power forward slash small forward position and they have no idea how to fill it well here's the interesting thing the lakers are interested in signing Carmelo Anthony. Now, this comes from Evan Massey, and this is the official quote. Rumors have been swirling that the Lakers will look to move on from Kyle Kuzma this offseason. This isn't much of a surprise, but they could target Carmelo Anthony to replace him. Now, the Lakers are expected to pursue Carmelo Anthony in free agency, and the source mentioned that the friendship between LeBron James and Carmelo Anthony would help this move come to fruition. So LeBron and Carmelo Anthony have been best friends since high school. They are part of the story 2003 NBA draft class, and this does contradict some other rumors here. You see, Carmelo Anthony stated that he wants to retire as a Portland Trailblazer, stating in January of 2020 that I feel like this is the place for me to end my career. It could have happened earlier, but it didn't. Now where I'm at in my life in my career, this is where I want to retire. So honestly, this move could happen. And I think it makes a lot of sense for both sides. Bear in mind, Carmelo Anthony, 37 years old, I understand, but hear me out. In the Lakers championship season, Kyle Kuzma played 25 minutes per game. The amount of minutes per game Carmelo Anthony played this past season, 24 and a half minutes per game. So people bring up whether Carmelo would be willing to come off of the bench. Well, this past season, he was a bench player. He only started for three games. I feel like this is a great opportunity for Carmelo Anthony to come more into the spotlight and to potentially win a championship. It, there's nothing wrong with getting a respected veteran in the locker room that is motivated to do whatever it takes to win a championship. It worked for the Lakers two years ago with Dwight Howard, and maybe it'll work for them here with Melo. On top of that, you get to shed a salary that in my opinion is fairly inefficient. Paying Kyle Kuzma $13 million a year to just sit on your bench and give you very low efficiency scoring isn't the move in my opinion. You could probably get Carmelo Anthony on the veteran minimum, which is much more preferred. So let me know in the comment section down below if you guys think this would happen. If you're a Laker fan, will this hype you up at all? And aside from that, I just started producing TikToks, guys. Make sure to check us out. We're going to start pushing these out a little bit more as we get some more support. It's at the Flight Mike on TikTok. I'm your boy, Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.